Hi, and thanks for coming back to watch part two of learning to use keyboards, the SwiftKey keyboard. Here, I'm gonna talk about layouts and some settings for your layout. So, okay. This time we're gonna take a look at keyboard layouts. So again, you need to go to the left of your predictive text line and touch to open up and show these quick actions. Instead of going to the keyboard modes, we're going to go to settings. So you're going to touch this ellipse, that's the three dots. And there are two places to go to for layouts. We'll look at the first place which is layouts and here you can select how your uh, letter keys are laid out on your keyboard. Now most of us use QWERTY and that's the uh, what most of us have as a uh, physical keyboard and that's where the words QWERTY Q W E R T Y are in your upper left top row and this is of the letter keys but there are other options in case you use one of these other keyboards I'm going to touch the back arrow here and we're going to go back to the ellipse and back to settings and there are multiple options you have here in settings that you may want to explore I am going to cover some of them in another video but what I am going to do is I'm going to go here to layout and keys okay resize this allows you to resize the keyboard we covered that in part one so if you've not seen that go back and watch that video Number row. Let's open up our keyboard and look and see what happens when we turn on number row. It puts the numbers here above. Add you another row to your keyboard. So I turn. I keep that turned off. Number position in number and symbols layout. I have not seen this make any changes to the keyboard. And I'm sorry, I don't know anything more about that. So I'm going to contact Swift Key Support and find out. Accented characters. Now, you're familiar with characters with accents on them. Uh, e, for example, has multiple accents. Now, if you hold and long press the E key, you can get the number three, but then you can also get these various accented um, characters. And this is true with every key on the keyboard that there happens to be an accent for. You can also access other symbols. If you turn off accented characters and then I long press the E key, I just get the number three. So if you have no need or desire to enter accented characters, you can turn that off and it'll make it easier for you to see what you're hunting for. Arrow keys. You'll note here that there's a row of arrows and this allows you navigation within your document that you're typing that works just like your arrow keys on a computer keyboard you can go up down left right and move yourself through a word or through your document so i leave it on because it does or does make it easier if i need to go back and uh, fix a typo in a word so i have that on now, it may be that you don't want the up, down, and you just want the left, right, so you can move through a word that you're trying to adjust. And to do that, you would go down here to the extended key layout. Um, before I do that, 
pop-ups. So when you type a letter, it'll pop up that letter. And I'll give you a visual indication that what you pressed did actually uh, show up. That would be good for passwords and things like that. Uh, so you can see that you're typing the correct password. Um, otherwise, I don't know how many people look at their keyboard while they are typing. I'm sure you do a little bit to maybe keep your thumbs and all in alignment. But are you actually reading it? Or are you reading what you're typing up here? The more you type, the the more you can just hit the keys without doing anything. Again, we're going to go back here to the arrow keys. So I'm going to turn these arrow keys off. And then you see how the keyboard got a little more compact. And this may be more uh, like what you're accustomed with other keyboards on uh, Android. But you can come here to Extended and turn it on. And you'll see you've got the the left and the right so maybe you can move by a touch up to the word that you want to uh, adjust and then your touch didn't get quite where it needed to in the word you can left and right through the word to make your changes so that's pretty cool um, it doesn't matter to me um, I, I've learned to type with that extra row of arrows. And if I have this extra row of arrows, I really have no need for this. And I have found that if you turn on extended layout, you cannot go into thumb mode. And I covered thumb mode in the part one video. So because of that, if I'm typing, I want to be in thumb mode then I would not turn that on. Last is this long press duration. And this is what happens when you long press. And I'll quick tap and I just deleted the Y, but if I hold, it does the entire word. And that's what that long press is for. Um, Actually, I should uh, come back to here. So you can set it for how long you have to hold it. 450 milliseconds is a long time. It's a little less than half a second, but that's still a long time when you're hitting a, a keyboard and tapping keys. However, you, make, you want to make sure you make it long enough so that if you are wanting to intentionally backspace over one letter you don't happen to linger there and delete the entire word those are the settings for the layout and keys there are other settings and they will be covered in a future video okay hopefully you found that helpful if you did give it a thumbs up and share it so that other people can uh, take a look. And feel free to comment down below about what you thought and what you'd like to hear about what, you, what you're having troubles with. And of course, subscribe. The more subscribers, the more content I can generate. Thanks for watching.